Station 3. Fresh Concrete Density The density of concrete, both in fresh and hardened form, is of interest to engineers. Higher density generally indicates higher strength concrete with an absence of air voids. Density also impacts upon the porosity and hence durability of concrete. At this station, groups will determine the density of fresh concrete in two different states, uncompacted and compacted. The influence of compaction upon the concrete, both in quantitative and visual terms, will be illustrated by determining the mass of concrete required to fill a known volume. In this case, a standard cylinder mould will be used. This mould has a diameter of 150mm internally and an overall internal height of 300mm. Dividing the mass of concrete required to fill this mould by the volume of the mould itself will provide the density of the fresh concrete. All densities will be expressed in kilograms per metre cubed. We will first determine the uncompacted density of fresh concrete. To start, a light coat of lubricating oil is applied to the inside of the mould. This will facilitate easy removal of concrete later on. The empty mass of the mould is determined by weighing it on a balance. It is recorded to the nearest 0.01 kg as M1. Next, the empty mould is placed on a level surface. It is filled continuously until excess concrete protrudes above the top of the cylinder. No compactive effort should be applied to the concrete during filling. Once full, the excess concrete should be removed with a steel float. Place the float on the plastic rim and use it to shear off excess concrete. Then push down lightly and, by way of circular motions, use the float to level the surface. Ensure that any spilt concrete is removed from the mould. The now full mould is then weighed again on the balance. The mass of the concrete and mould combined is recorded, again to the nearest 0.01 kg, as M2. Determine the volume of the plastic cylinder mould from the given dimensions. This is recorded as V. The density of the fresh uncompacted concrete, denoted by the Greek letter gamma, can then be calculated as gamma equals M2 minus M1 over V. This density should be expressed to the nearest 10 kilograms per meter cubed. We now move on to the density of fresh compacted concrete. As before, a light coating of oil is applied to the mould. The empty mass of the cylinder is again determined and recorded to the nearest 0.01 kilograms as M1. This time around, a vibrating table will be used to compact the concrete within the mould. In a vibrating table, a motor with eccentric weights rotates at 3000 revolutions per minute, thus vibrating the top platform and hence whatever sits on it at up to 50 Hz. Vibrocompaction is a very efficient method of removing air voids from concrete and thus increasing the density. Goggles must be worn when using the vibrating table to protect against splashes. Each layer is vibrated for approximately 10 seconds. During compaction, small air bubbles will be seen on the top surface. This is an indication that air is being removed from the concrete. The vibrating table should be stopped when these air bubbles cease to appear. The surface should be leveled as before using a steel float upon completion of compaction. Again, any spilt material must be removed from the mould. The filled, compacted mould is weighed on the balance. The mass of the concrete plus cylinder mould combined is recorded as M2. The density of the fresh, compacted concrete is then calculated exactly as before. There should be a noticeable difference in density between the compacted and uncompacted fresh concrete. This is due to the presence of air voids in the uncompacted concrete. Using the data that you have recorded, you can determine the volume of voids, or air content, in the uncompacted concrete. As a rule of thumb, every 1% of additional air within a concrete sample will result in a 5% reduction in compressive strength. The presence of non-discrete air voids is also hugely detrimental to concrete structures as it allows for water ingress. As such, proper compaction is hugely important. On construction sites, poker vibrators, which are similar in principle to a vibrating table, are used to compact fresh concrete. Manual compaction with tamping rods is also widely practiced on site and in laboratory settings. It is, however, possible to overcompact concrete. If excessive vibration is imparted on the sample, the larger, heavier aggregates will fall to the bottom of the mould, 
and the lighter constituents, such as fine aggregate and cement paste, will rise to the top. This process, known as segregation, is undesired as it will produce a non-uniform, non-homogeneous concrete. In turn, this can lead to a weaker material.